one week to turn this, these, this, and that, and all of this. back into this. Hey everyone, welcome back to Engines and Unfinished Business. Now, I don't know about you, but I feel like this is taking far too long. The problem is I only really get to come to the workshop for maybe four to six hours a week at the moment. Uh, Sophie is still very much making a baby, so it's all me on my own. And Misty would be a great summer car, but summer's pretty much over at this point. But I have a solution. I've taken the next week off work. I've bought pretty much, I've got everything either here or on its way. And I'm just gonna blitz it, get help from friends and family where I can, and try and get her done by the end of the week. So just like those crappy TV car shows, I've got a self-imposed, inconsequential time restraint. But unlike those shows, at least I admit it. Um, if she's not ready by the end of the week, it's no big deal. But having said that, I would really like her ready by our anniversary, because obviously Misty was our wedding car. Anniversary at the beginning of September, it'd be great to have her back on the road by then. As is workshop tradition, I've written out a big to-do list on a piece of cardboard and stuck it to the wall and it's a pretty big fucking to-do list, and I've probably forgotten some stuff as well. So, what's next? Uh-huh. Sweet. So, over the week, um, I'm still going to be filming, but I'm not sure I'll have the time or energy to keep on top of editing, so I doubt I'll be releasing videos daily. They might get released over like two or three weeks, but You'll be there along for the ride, and the videos are probably a little bit more raw because I just really want to get this done. Um, so, time to get started. First up, now I've had my tea, is oil pump. Now, to regular viewers, this will be no surprise, but I've got to start this again because I done goofed. Uh, I shall explain in a minute once I've taken this wheel off. So, it turns out I misread the instructions for doing this. When I was seating this oil seal, I thought the instructions said to seat it right down to the bottom of this cavity, whatever you want to call it, but it actually says to keep the top of the oil seal flush with this edge. And I thought maybe it's okay to leave it, but having reading about how these oil seals work, they need the oil behind them to create a layer of oil around the seal. So I went back to Toyota, tail between my legs, bought another one. They're getting to know me there and laughed at my incompetence, but eh, what can you do? So pull this one out, put this one in, but not hit it in so far, just get it so it's level with the face of this. There we go. Alright, time to try again, and this time not embarrass myself. So you can actually see there at the bottom, there's a little hole, and that allows oil in behind the seal, um, which allows the seal to make, because if the shaft just rubs on the seal itself, it'll burn out. There has to be a very small layer of oil in there, which is what actually allows these to work. And so with the oil seal right up against that hole, it wouldn't allow the oil in. So it's a good thing I noticed, otherwise that seal would have burnt out pretty quick on use, and then this thing would have started pissing oil again. Got my new seal, got my appropriately sized socket. Let's try and get that roughly level all the way around and try and keep it that way. Now just keep an eye on it, and once it gets roughly level, that'll be it. So as you can see now, it's flush with the top of the oil pump rather than right in as far as it will go. The difficulty with that is when you hammer it in as far as it will go, it's kind of self-leveling. With this, it can get a little bit cockeyed. So, I mean, as far as I can tell, that's in level. I'm hoping it's good enough. So I've got my um, front crank seal here as well. Unfortunately, unlike the oil pump shaft seal, these ones aren't pre-greased and I haven't had a chance to pick up any grease that is suitable for that, so that's going to go on hold for now. Uh, instead, I'm going to look at uh, getting out the old rear main seal, which I have decided to replace. So here's the rear main seal. Originally, I was not sure about changing this because it didn't look like it was leaking, and they're about 60 quid from Toyota. 
Uh, but I found a company, Hurley Race Parts, I think. I'll put a link in the description. And they have official Toyota ones for less than half that. So while the engine's out, it's worth trying to change it. I'm going to try and remove it while it's in the engine rather than removing this bracket around it because that way I don't have to change the gasket on the bracket as well. But worst case scenario, bracket's another uh, the gasket's another 15 quid, so it's not the end of the world. So apparently the trick is to cut through all the way around and then you can pull it out. Main concern is obviously don't want to risk damaging any of this cranky type stuff and also if I have to drop the engine to the floor to get to it, it's in a really awkward position as well. So let's see how this goes. Well, it's coming. Haha. <laughs> Fuck yeah. There we go. One nasty rear main seal. I don't actually believe that worked. I'm surprised. So next up, I should be able to get this whole oil pump assembly off as I've already sliced through all the sealer on the front of the sump. So I can do that and then put the full oil pump back together on the bench. Try giving a little tapper tapper tapper. I think I may have to get the oil pan off first and smack it out from underneath annoyingly. So, got the engine back on the stand so I can get the sump off. And through a combination of the method I was using earlier with the hammer, and once I started to get it off a bit, I found I could just grab a blade and sort of slice it through, and it's pretty much ready to come off now. It's just this last little bit, in fact it may even just fall away because there's so little holding it on at this point. Basically off. Here we go. There we go. Once again, I'm an idiot. Of course I couldn't take the oil pump off with the um, oil pan still on because I need to remove the oil pickup. So let's do that first. And that's going to need a new gasket when it goes back in. So more stuff to order from Toyota. Huzzah! Now I should be able to get the oil pump off. go. Take this over to the bench. So I've wrapped the bottom end up best as I can just to try and keep crap out of there. Next up, do the oil pump. So first job is going to be to get the old gasket off which it turns out was actually broken anyway so good thing I'm doing this. So this is literally the most stubborn gasket I've ever encountered. I've been hacking on it for about half an hour and I've done less than a quarter. So I'm going to leave that for now and see if any of you lovely people can give me some tips on that and move on to getting this oil seal out. There we go. Well, something achieved at least. So while I figure out how the hell I'm going to get that gasket off the oil pump, I'm going to move on to something else, and that's going to be this CV boot, which I'm pretty sure came off while I was removing the axle, as it wasn't flagged in the MOT, and that is something that they would fail a car for, or at least it would be an advisory. Um, no, it would be a failure if it's come off completely. That's not important. Anyway, so I'm going to make sure that it has still got a good amount of grease in there and it all looks good, and assuming it has, just going to reattach it. Looks pretty greasy on the inside, don't know if you can tell, so... Just going to try and take this off and put a new one on. There we go. Right, so now I should be able to put that over there.
Ah, fuck, that didn't work. Let's try again. Let's see how this one goes. Looks like it's holding. Make sure it's... Yep, I think that's all good. It's one little job done. So you may remember the bolts that hold the anti-roll bar or sway bar, whatever you want to call it. Both of them sheared, stuck in the bracket. So the next little job is to try and drill these out so I can reuse them with new bolts. So I think drilling is taking far too long. I'm gonna try grinding it off instead, see how that goes. So I cut the bulkhead off with the cutoff wheel and the grinder, a lot quicker, but sparks more painful. So now I'm just gonna see if I can punch the rest of the stud out or if I'm gonna still need to drill it. That was nice and easy. Grinder is definitely the way forward. So I ground out the holes in both brackets. Just going to widen these holes a bit to accept an 8mm bolt and then clean them up, give them a paint, and they should be good to go. So here's my fixed up anti roll bar brackets. Um, all I need now is a coat of paint because I've stripped most of the paint and old rust off them. But I'll do that when I'm painting all the other brackets that need paint. So that job is done. So that's it for this first day of the crazy week. I was really hoping to get more done, but as always, that oil pump is a bitch. It was nice to be able to just switch to other tasks when I got stuck though, so that's cool to knock some other little things out. Um, with the oil pump stuck gasket, I'm going to try soaking it in some warm soapy water, I've read that can help. Uh, if any of you have got any suggestions, leave a comment, although I may have already solved it by the time you see this because I don't know how quickly I'll get this video out, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I don't know if I said this before, but today is Sunday the 19th. Um, I'll just keep you an idea of where we are in the week. And if you want to keep up to date sort of live with it, I'll be putting stuff on our Instagram of how we're getting on. So that's it. Thanks to our patrons as always. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.